In this video, I will be ranking every single champion from best to worst. So I've done my research for this video. I've researched who are the absolute best champions or the worst champions. I've also asked a few pro players who they think are the meta champions. So I have a very good idea what are the best and worst champions in this current meta. So we're gonna start off with tanks here and then we're gonna go for supports, flanks, and then damage. So the first tank we have here is Ash. Ash, I have nothing much to say. Uh, let's just put her in good. She's just very well rounded she can basically do everything as a tank she can be a point tank if she needs to but most likely you're gonna be an off tank for ash you can make a lot of space for your team your ultimate is very good you can annoy the shit out of the enemy team so she can do a lot but the problem with ash is that there's other tanks out there that are a little bit better than ash for example alice over here alice is just a little bit better than ash alice is just way more annoying the only way to counter alice is to buy unbound even if you buy unbound Bound. he can still be so good and you cannot even buy wrecker for his shield every other tanks you can just buy wrecker to destroy them but for alice even if they buy wrecker you, they cannot do anything and if you're a really good alice player it's basically gg he can make a lot of space for your team azan is basically a better version of ash in my opinion he can just do way more better stuff he has more mobility his damage is i would say a lot more better than ash his ult eh, like not the best but uh it can still quite work but he's definitely one of the best off tanks currently in this meta Beric, mm, he's very standard point tank i'll put him in good i mean he's always the same old barrack you know you put turrets you put your shield up you put your little dome if you need to same old barrack you know who fernando he's just a star of point tanks currently i would definitely say easily he's the best tank in the game currently he was already the best tank before and then he got nerfed and he kind of fell off a bit but now because they changed his Aegis talent and they made it like base kit he's back in the meta yet again and because they made Aegis as a base kit you can just go for scorch and you do so much more damage and i would admit all of his talents are actually really good they can all be very viable but in my opinion scorch is still the best oof inara inara fell off hard she was like the best point tank but um she got nerfed a lot of times she can still be very good in my opinion she's still like second or third best point tank the mother grace talent is still very good she can also be very hard to kill so she's still doing inara stuff khan ooh, in my opinion khan is the best off tank in this current meta and i feel like he's been very good for like the longest time he's always been really good i feel like they really need to do something for khan because he's always just, he's just always good his ult is probably the best ult in in the game basically well maybe not the best but at least one of the best alts because literally as soon as you start a fight you can just grab someone kill that person and it's gonna be unfair it's gonna be 5v4 you basically win at that point so every single start of the fight you just win the game it's so annoying to deal with you can heal you can throw them around and stuff he's just oof, very annoying makoa um i don't really see a lot of makoa recently and even the pro players are saying he's not that good i would still put him in good though because he can still be very good if you know how to play him properly a good makoa player can still make so much space for you you can be very annoying because you just keep hooking people your shield is also very good but unfortunately there's just better off tanks out there than makoa but it's still quite good nyx now i have some mixed opinions on nyx some say she's like very good some say it's like okay in my opinion though i would still put her in very good and my reasoning on that is because she's just so tanky if the enemy team doesn't have anything to counter nyx she can just be a menace in the game rom unfortunately rom is still not doing very good even though the current updates he got some buffs which is actually really good in my opinion but it didn't really do anything for him he still gets countered really easily even if you're running that cc immunity talent as much as i love playing rom because he's actually very fun to play there's just way better off tanks out there than rom rukus um i would say there's better off tanks out there but he can still be good kind of like makoa here if you're a rukus specialist you can definitely carry the game you can do so much damage your ult is very very good to capturing the point or the payload you can easily kill at least one person every time you ult it's also very mobile definitely one of the most mobile tanks out there if you're a rookie specialist you can definitely be in very good but not every rookie players are like very good though so um i'll put him in good for now terminus mm, as much as i love terminus i really want to put him in good but uh there's just way better point tanks out there in my opinion he's still doing 
not the best. Even though the people I've asked, they said he's actually doing a lot more better nowadays because of the buffs and stuff. Now, I would say though, he's very map dependent. If you're in Bright Marsh or like Ice Mines, he's actually very good in those maps. But if the map is like very open, like for example, Timber Mill, he's not really that good in my opinion, that map. But you can still make him work, definitely. Turvald, oh dude, he's literally getting banned most of the time, if not all the time. He's just that annoying. He can shield himself, he can shield his teammates, he can like silence you. Everything about him is just too annoying. He's definitely up there like Khan. They can both be the best of tank in my opinion. And the last tank, Yagoroth. Yagoroth is not doing very good this current meta. Now don't get me wrong, I've seen some Yagoroth specialists out there and they're actually cracked at Yagoroth. Like they're making Yagoroth so good. The problem with that is that you have to be a specialist with this character and even that there's just so much better tanks out there and you can easily farm Yagros as well like literally just get a Tyra even BK like BK is just a really good counter for Yagros as well like literally every time I see a Yagros in the enemy team I'm just happy I'm happy there's a Yagros because I can just easily get my all charge and farm so this is the tier list for tanks now let's move on to the supports so we're starting off with Curvus here surprisingly enough Curvus is actually good in this meta I thought he was gonna be like around okay you know but I've done my research and then I asked pro players about him apparently he's actually doing quite good he's definitely the best pocket support so far because spoiler alert Genos is just not doing good in this meta so and surprisingly enough he can actually heal quite a lot I still hate his ultimate I still think that his ult is just not doing good like if you're inside his ultimate and if you're an ally you should be getting healed and if you're an enemy you should be getting damaged like I don't get it just make it like Grok I really think that would make him so much more viable now I'm kind of sad about this actually because I've heard pro players think that fear is not doing very good but um I'm still gonna put her in good even though in my research they're saying fear is not doing good in this meta like her heals are kind of underwhelming the only reason why you would pick furia is like if you have double support and you can kind of go damage so in the very high elo fear is not doing very good but I would say though if you're not that high elo fear can still quite work grok now um grok is one of those characters out there where i got mixed opinions on some say he's very good some say he's quite bad so um i don't even know where to put him i guess i'll just put him in good i'll put him in like in the middle i heard his totem talent are very viable i don't really like his totem talent i think it's very boring and if your teammates are not very coordinated it's not very good because they can just leave the totem and they're like what the heck i'm not getting any healing in the high elo i can definitely see why he can be good but um low elo i don't think he's that good grover ugh, bro easy easily s tier he's been one of the best support for so long now he's always just up there he's always like in the top five best supports for someone who's healing aoe he heals quite a lot you can literally just be beside him and he's healing 24 7 his ult you can now cancel it so you can literally just pop your ult for like two seconds and then cancel it you're back at full health and then your ult is like 60 percent or something it's kind of crazy they also changed his stun and deep root so now he can root again which is very annoying but um i still think his uh his heal talent is very good i am gonna put her in b she's still doing pretty good but in my opinion there's like better supports out there in high elo for most people if you're not in high elo she can still be very good luna can still heal your escape is uh you know it's very decent your heals are also very good in the late game they kind of go a little bit bad but um it's still pretty good jenna sadly to say he's the worst support so far he just got nerfed so hard he's just not doing very good anymore i literally tested this new genos and he's just oh my god dude it feels so bad the only thing good about it is you can heal through walls and his ult is still very good but that's basically it he doesn't heal anymore lilith i would definitely say very good lilith just heals so much you can also do a lot of damage with lilith she's like a very hybrid support you can do a lot of damage you can heal a lot her ult is still very good you cannot go wrong with lilith damba um i want to put him in very good but i think i'll put him in good for now i would only put maldamba in very good if you're a maldamba specialist because he's a little bit harder to play if you don't know how to play him he's not gonna be that good if i'll put him in okay some say he can be good but there's just better supports out there he's also one of those supports where you need to be a specialist for pip so you can actually make him viable but um he's good but you need to be good with him ray is also not doing very good in this meta there's just way better 
hours up outside there. Now don't get me wrong, Ray can actually be very viable. But the problem with Ray is just there's just better supports out there. Maybe if you're kind of in the low elo, you can still make Ray viable. But I heard in the higher elo, Ray is just not doing very good. But if you're like in gold, maybe even plat or below, you can definitely still make Ray viable. Ceres, Ceres is just one of those characters out there where they're just beginner friendly. In the high elo, you rarely see Ceres. If you're in the low elo, you can definitely still make Ceres work because she just, you know, she heals AoE and she's very easy to use. But uh, if you're in the high elo, Ceres is not doing very good. And the last support, Ying. Ying is definitely best. In my opinion, Ying is just the best support so far. She heals a lot. She can do quite good damage even, even if you don't go damage stunned. Her ult is very good. Like she just does so much. Her escape is one of the best escape in the entire game in my opinion. She can be a little difficult but uh, if you know how to play her, she's just very good. Definitely the best support in this current meta. So this is the support tier list. Now let's move on to the flanks. Androxus, you cannot go wrong with Androxus. He's always gonna be very good. There's a lot of cracked Androxus pairs out there and you can just make him so broken if you know how to play him properly. Buck, eh, like Buck is doing not the best. There's just way better flankers out there than Buck. You can definitely make him work if you know how to use him properly. But in the higher elo, he's just not getting played a lot. Caspian. Now, I'm kind of surprised actually. Caspian is like one of the worst, if not the worst champion currently. And I don't really get it because he actually deals quite a lot of damage when I tested it. But literally, I've done my research and I've asked so many pro players. They're all saying in the higher elo, Caspian is absolutely dog shit. Which I can kind of understand because they completely changed a lot of his cards. He's just not doing as good as before. He was actually one of the most broken flanks out there before but they just nerf him to the ground like crazy eevee dude eevee is always gonna be very good eevee in my opinion is the most balanced champion in the game she can either be the worst champion if you don't know how to use her or the best champion if you're like a god eevee player but you could be decent with eevee and you can still make her quite good kazumi meh that's just way better i would even put do i even want to put her in decent yeah f it, i'll put it decent bro there's just way way better flankers out there now granted she's definitely doing way better than before she was just completely useless before she's doing a little bit better but um there's just better flankers out there koga now i heard a lot of good things for koga i was gonna put him good but i heard he's actually doing very good in this meta so i'll put him in very good now i don't even remember what kind of buff he got i'll put it in the screen if there's any buffs but um i don't know why he's doing so good and he might be doing a lot better in console but this is a, a pc tier list so it might be a little different he might be way better on console but lex now um there's just way better flankers out there than lex i mean he does a lot of damage i guess but his escape not very good the only thing he has is good damage and that's basically it even if you're the best lex player against like an eevee or something you're not gonna be doing a lot against a good eevee player mave same with mave eevee and mave are like the most balanced characters in my opinion she's always gonna be at least in the top five best flanks and even if you don't know how to play her you can just go for a straight justice and you can you can still be very good with that moji uh moji same old same old uh i was gonna put her in decent but that's only for the higher elo for the higher elo definitely decent but i think she can be playable if you're like gold or below you can definitely make her work she deals a lot of damage if you can get close but that's the problem you need to get close for moji if you cannot get close if the enemy team are always grouping up and they know how to counter you you're not gonna be doing very good with moji sky she recently got some changes i'll put her in very good now i think she's doing a lot better on console like if you're playing on a, on a controller but even on pc she can still be very good talus now in my opinion talus is actually very underrated but um i'll still put him in good i heard good things about talus he's actually getting played a little bit more than before he can be very annoying he deals a lot of damage for a flank he's just the definition of being annoying seven eh, like you need to be a specialist with seven it's one of those characters but i'll put him in okay there's just way better flankers out there they just nerfed this guy quite a lot and he's just not doing that good anymore he can still be very fun though and he, you can still make him viable in lower elo but um higher elo not doing very good vatu vatu is one of the best flankers in this current meta i feel like vatu is always in the top five not even in top five like top three and i don't know why they're not nerfing him properly because he's always just really good like maybe lower the dashes you can do like instead of having three maybe nerf it to two or something like that like uh, he's just always good like do something for this mother 
Joker. Vora, um, I'm actually hearing a lot of good things for Vora. It's kind of hard to put her because I want to put her in between. Like, I'll put her in good for now because it kind of just depends on the matchup. If you're countered with Vora, it's definitely not very good. For example, if they have a lot of shields or like if they have a lot of supports, she's she kind of falls off if they have a lot of shields or like double supports. But in the right matchup, she can be very good. And the last flank, Zin. Um, Zin, I'll put him in good. There's better flankers out there than Zin. Now, granted, he's definitely one of the most annoying flanks out there in the lower elo. But the higher elo you go, he kind of falls off and there's just better flanks out there. So this is the tier list for flanks and let's move on to the last roll damage. Okay, let's speed this up a little bit because I've been recording for 34 minutes. Anyway, I'll put her, um, I'll put her in good. She recently got some buffs and I don't think it's that big of a deal. In the lower elo, she can be very, very good. But in the higher elo, I feel like there's just better damage out there. Speaking of better damage out there, there's BK for you. In my opinion, BK is still one of the best damage out there. He can just do everything. He has good CC, he has good damage, and now he has good mobility. He can just do everything. The only problem with BK, he's a little bit harder to play, but if you know how to use him, definitely very good. Elsie, mm, I was gonna put her in good, but I kind of want to put her in very good at least. I think if your aim is really good, you can definitely make Cassie very viable and very good. Like the flankers are not gonna do anything to you if you can actually land your shots. Dredge. Uh, Dredge and uh, Queen over here are kind of the same, so I'll put them in the same category. Dredge is more annoying in the lower elo, but the higher elo you go, he kind of falls off because he gets countered a lot easier in there because enemies in the higher elo, they know what to do against a Dredge player. Jogos. Now, um, Jogos is one of those specialist characters. If you know how to use him, he can be like very good. But for most people, I'll put him in good. He also just gets countered easily if you don't know how to use him that much because as soon as he flies, so you can just shoot him down and he's basically dead so you need to be a very good jogos player so you can like pick around corners and you don't just fly in the middle and you just die instantly so you definitely need to learn him imani now imani for the longest time is not doing very good but uh, the current update she's actually doing a lot better her dragon is not buggy anymore maybe sometimes it can still be buggy but i heard it's not really buggy anymore she's just the jack of all trade her mobility is okay her damage is okay she can also cc a little bit which is you know okay she's literally the definition of jack of all trades she can do everything but doesn't excel at anything Kinesa, blech. Kinesa not doing very good bro <laughs> I literally know someone who plays Kinesa like a lot of times and even that Kinesa player who is literally a Kinesa specialist even he said Kinesa is just not doing very good the way you need to charge up your attacks and it takes so long for it to get charged it's just so long like I don't get it and it doesn't even do that much damage even if you charge it fully there's just way way better damage out there than Kinesa now surprisingly enough Lian is one of if not the best damage in the lower elo you don't really see her a lot or even in the casuals you don't see her a lot but apparently in the higher elo she's getting banned or if she's not getting banned she's getting picked but she's doing so much now like it's actually insane like she's getting picked a lot of times octavia i mean you cannot go around with octavia i'll put her in good i feel like octavia is also one of those specialists out there if you don't know how to use her it's just kind of meh in my opinion there's also just way better damage out there but you know she can still make her work i guess now it's kind of sad to say but omen is just not doing very good in this meta i really think omen is one of if not the worst champion in this current update they just nerf omen to the ground like crazy he used to be the best damage and now he's the worst damage all of his build now is just not good his talents are kind of underwhelming he's just lacking he's definitely just lacking sati i have nothing much to say for sati she's doing good she deals good damage her ult is very good her talents all of her talents can be viable but in the higher elo i don't really see her a lot though she's just in the middle now Shalin. Shalin, in my opinion, is actually very good. He deals a lot of damage. His ultimate is very good. You can go invis. He can also counter tanks really, really well. He's definitely doing very good in this current meta. Strix, eh, it's kind of the same with Kinesa. They're not doing very good in this meta. I feel like this meta is very aggressive. You want to play characters that are just very mobile and stuff. Tiberius, I would say a good over here, but I really think Tiberius is very underrated. In the higher elo, I don't really see a 
got out of Tiberius and they said he's not doing very good in the higher elo but I really really think he's underrated and you can actually make him very good because he actually deals a lot of damage and his ultimate even though it doesn't look very good you can use it for escape you don't have to always use it for damage now let's speed this up because this uh, three over here are basically the same Tyra deals a lot of damage but that's basically it like I said I feel like this meta is kind of aggressive the problem with Tyra she's all about damage like um, that's basically it she also got nerfed quite a lot of times already so she's just not doing very good same with Victor I mean he does have better mobility but there's just way better damage out there but I mean they're in the middle they're good but not very good same with Vivian but um, do I really want to put her in good I really want to put her in okay bro because she's all about damage yeah screw it she deals a lot of damage bro she deals a lot of damage she's very boring to play that's the only problem but she deals a lot and a lot of damage and let's be honest are you really having fun playing Vivian like it's not even worth it to play Vivian now for Willow Willow got some crazy changes and she's actually doing very good I was gonna put her in very good but you know what I'd put her in best she's getting played a lot actually the anti-healing is very good and I, I always said that Willow is underrated in my opinion and people are finally playing Willow now granted she got some buffs that's why she's doing a lot better now but I always thought Willow is so underrated she deals a lot of damage the anti-healing is very good they made her escape a lot better her ultimate is also very good so you cannot go wrong with Willow now I was gonna say that's the last champion but uh, there's an extra champion in here which is the horse now the horse is considered support for some reason but um let's be honest the horse is a damage so for those people who miss the horse and you're probably wondering like what the hell is this horse basically they made this horse playable for like limited time this horse can jump can spit on your enemies you can punch on enemies the only problem with this horse it's only limited time and it doesn't have ultimate sadly now i'm gonna be biased come on the horse has to be s there bro come on bro <laughs> come on it's the horse bro it's literally the best champion in the game and surprisingly he actually deals a lot of damage i'm not gonna lie i'm a little biased though because he's definitely not s tier but um you know i just want to put him in s tier because it's the horse come on guys it's the horse jesus christ i've been recording for nearly 50 minutes and this video will be cut so much it's probably gonna be like 20 minutes or something so let's do a little recap over here this is the tier list for tanks i'm not gonna change anything here this is the tier list for support i think it's very accurate tier list for flankers i feel like flanks are always the same i feel like i always see this characters on top and for damage this is the damage to list so do you guys agree with me or not now keep in mind that this is only my opinion do not take this personally but i would say i've done a lot of research for this so i really think this is a very accurate tier list anyways that's it for today guys hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you guys next time bye 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 everyone